Welcome to chapter four of general chemistry. This is podcast 4.1 and now we're going to start talking about how to quantify a lot of the information we've been looking at. How do we quantify numbers of uh, atoms, numbers of substances and chemicals? Um, we know how to name everything. We know how to calculate mass of something. So we're going to look at the calculation of mass again. This is October 2010. Uh, so we're going to start with all matter has mass. Um, even very, very, very tiny pieces of matter, those also have mass. They're just very, very small. When we're measuring matter, we use the mass or the weight. We know the difference between mass and weight. Okay, so maybe go back and review. Sorry about that H. Maybe go back and review what the difference is between these two. Uh, we can also look at the volume of something. We can measure how much space it takes up, or we could look at the density of an object and this is d equals the mass over volume or how much matter we can fit into a given volume so all three of these are used very very frequently when we're talking about um, different kinds of substances uh, we're going to be using mass and weight uh, the most as we get into this next uh, chapter when we're talking about atoms remember we have uh, they all atoms have an average atomic mass and the units in this are going to be the AMU or the atomic mass units. You need to be including units on everything and soon we're going to look at how atomic mass units, AMUs, relate to grams and how we can calculate amounts of substances that we can actually measure and weigh. When we're thinking about atoms, the mass in the atom, well where is the mass? Uh, if you think back to chapter 2 we know that all mass is in the nucleus of the atom. Right? Protons have a weight of 1 AMU. Neutrons also have a weight of 1. And electrons, these are kind of funny because they are matter, they, they do have mass, but it's so, so tiny compared to everything else. Those are going to be called zero atomic mass units. So when we're talking about the mass of an atom, we're only looking at the protons and the neutrons and how those interact with other atoms and how those define the, the total size or all the bulk of the matter of, of these atoms. And also remember that the nucleus is very small and condensed and that the electrons travel around the outside in a very low density pattern and a low density path. And we're going to talk about this more in the next chapter actually. Um, so all of our mass is located here right in the very middle of our nuclear radius. If we're talking to uh, discuss the mass of molecules and compounds, uh, there's a couple different ways we can look at it. Uh, we know that atoms all have an average atomic mass, right, from the periodic table. Average atomic mass. You need to remember the distinction between the average atomic mass versus a mass number. Mass numbers are definite whole numbers for one atom, an individual atom. The average atomic mass is what we're going to be looking at because we're going to be making generalizations about these atoms. So we're going to be using average atomic mass. So if I ask for the weight of an atom, you just look at the periodic table and you can tell me what its mass is. For compounds, if we're talking about groups of atoms that are bonded together, this is uh, atoms or the atomic masses uh, added up, or the sum of the atomic masses. So if we're talking about carbon, a single atom of carbon weighs 12.01 atomic mass units. That's easy enough. Carbon monoxide, CO, well that's a carbon, so 12.01 plus 16 for oxygen, so that gives me a mass of 28.01. CO2, now I've got one carbon, 12.01, plus 16 times 2 oxygens, so that's 32, 44.01. So all you need to do is multiply by a multiple if you have one, or just add up atom 1 plus atom 2 plus atom 3, atom 4, however many you have in a given compound. So it's very, very straightforward. It's just simple addition. We need to make a distinction, though, between the molecular weight and a formula weight. This is just correctness when we're talking. A molecular weight, molecular weight, when we're talking about molecular weight, this is covalent compounds only. My handwriting is terrible today, I apologize. Covalent compounds only. Because when I talk about something like glucose, its formula is C6H12O6. I can grab one of these and that would represent an entire molecule. Ionic solids, on the other hand, so we're going to talk about formula weight. 
This is going to be when we get into the bonding chapter, so we're looking ahead a little bit, but the formula weight, this is for ionic solids, and it has to do with the molecular formula versus a compound formula. Uh, glucose, like I said, is an entire molecule. This is glucose. If I'm talking about an ionic solid like sodium chloride, this does not represent the entire solid. This is one piece of the solid, or one, um, one building block. One building block. This does not represent the entire substance itself. This would be one chunk or one Lego out of the building block. Ionic solids are crystals, and so when we get into crystal structure and things like that, we'll see how this relates. But when we're talking about ionic solids, it needs to be a formula weight because it's repeating formula units. When we're talking about molecular weight, then we can say, okay, this is a covalent compound like glucose um, or any other group of nonmetals bonded together. So this is super, super short because it's super easy. I need you to read section 3.1 in the text. And then you can look at book questions 3.1 and 3.2. Um, because this is a very simple idea, um, if you just go through the book, grab out different molecules, different compounds, different formulas, and find their formula weight. It shouldn't take a whole lot of practice. And I've also thrown this worksheet into your packet. It's not listed on the notes. Uh, but it's just a gram formula mass worksheet where it gives you multiple compounds and you just need to add them up to find the mass. So um, atomic mass, uh, uh, formula mass, molecular mass, things like that, all we're doing is adding, multiplying by a factor, and getting the overall mass. And remember, we need to include units, so we're going to be talking in atomic mass units. Always, always, always include a unit. So uh, practice this. Uh, this is objective 3, or I'm sorry, not... Uh, not 3.1, objective 4.1, although we are still in chapter 3, so don't get confused about objectives versus uh, textbook chapters. So if you have questions in class, you can feel free to ask them then, and I will see you uh, when you get there.